I'm Corey. I'm with Book Soup. And tonight we have a delicious little evening for you. Um, we are hosting what's called a Valentine's Day Poetry Reading. Our guests tonight are Nikhil Davis, Amy Gerschler, and Cecilia Woolock. Cecilia Woolock is the author of six collections of poems and a novel. She's a Fulbright Fellowship, and her work has been translated in other languages, including French, German, Romanian, Hebrew, and many more. Amy Gerschler is the author of 14 books of poetry, including Scattered at Sea. She was the 2010 guest editor of the yearly anthology Best American Poetry. Her work has appeared in a variety of magazines and anthologies. Nikhil Davis is a California poet, collaborator, and performance artist. Her collections include <clears throat> The Walled Wife, In the Circus of You, Becoming Jews, and more. So please put your hands together and welcome Cecilia, Amy, and Nikhil. I'm just going to read love poems because yesterday was Valentine's Day. Ooh. And we're Galentines here. We're gals who are poets who love one another. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. 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 Okay. And Palantines, too. And Palantines, yes. So I'm going to start with um, a blazon. And um, a blazon is, by tradition, it's a list of attributes of the beloved. But instead, this is a list of what I would do for you. Blazon. For you, I'd stick the little pins of joy in all my arms. Stitch my eyelids shut with stars. Kiss the darkness from the dark. For you, I'd lean on wind and let hot sky lick up my dress. My thighs a cloud through which to plunge. My hands two prisons for your hands. For you, I'd pull the carnival of ribbons from my heart. Commit the birdish sin of song. Float down the river of your tongue. For you, I'd drown the wine with more wine, ruby up my hair, drag strings of fish along my waist, sigh like a heap of broken glass. For you, I'd keep each angel in its cage of light. For you. It's a pantoum. Um, you probably know that pantoums come from Malaysian fishing songs, so it must have been a call and response kind of thing. Um, so the, the lines roll over and repeat in a certain pattern. I spent my wander years in rural Kentucky, and you would never know it to look at me. <laughs> um, and uh, we rode horses a lot, but we couldn't afford saddles. So you just made a halter out of some rope and rode bareback. And this uh, poem is um, from my experience from my teenage years. And I should probably say it's for Tony Everton and Boo Abel. Boo. Bareback Pantoum. One night, bareback and young, we rode through the woods, and the woods were on fire. Two borrowed horses, two local boys, whose waists we clung to, my sister and I. And the woods were on fire. The pounding of hooves, the smell of smoke, and the sharp sweat of boys, whose waists we clung to, my sister and I, as we rode toward flame with the sky in our mouths. The pounding of hooves, the smell of smoke, and the sharp sweat of boys, and the heart saying, mine, as we rode toward flame with the sky in our mouths, the trees turning gold, then crimson, white, and the heart saying, mine, of the wild, bright world, the trees turning gold, then crimson, white, as they burned in the darkness, and we were girls of the wild, bright world, of the woods near our house. We could turn, see the lights as they burned in the darkness, and we were girls, so we rode just to ride through the woods near our house, 
we could turn, see the lights, and the horses would carry us, carry us home, so we rode just to ride, my sister and I, just to be close to that danger, desire. And the horses would carry us, carry us home, two borrowed horses, two local boys, my sister and I, just to be close to that danger, desire. One night, bareback and young, we rode through the woods. Mm -hmm. Tangible sweetness. Oh God, she's beautiful. It's New Year's Eve, the dress is pink. She's 21 years old. She hasn't seen me yet. She may not even know I'll come. A sour daughter, sickly, difficult, begging her to save the dress. And here I am, gone past it, already older than she was the night she wore it. And right there in her body, crying with her on the steps. What's terrible is I know why she's crying, and I can't explain it either. On the periphery, my father smokes a cigarette, laughs, worries. Through space and time, we touch in this thin moment, make a pact to break jaggedly in three, to live by chance. There's even music, and it's music I will love, an orchestra in black and white, a dance that haunts my body. Mother, for the pink dress, for each thing that never was. Father, a toast. Gather that woman in your arms. Begin my life. It's 1956. This is a waltz. My parents were actually Harry and Laverne, but my mother, after she died, um, would no longer answer to mom, because we talk to our moms after they die, right? I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> and she, her middle name, which she claimed was from a, you know, a kind of drunken uncle who thought it meant, who thought it sounded French, her middle name was Pearl. Um, after she died, she would. <laughs> <laughs> After she died, she, I could only communicate with her by calling her Pearl. Um, my parents were seven years apart in age. My father passed away at 73. Seven years later, my mother followed. This is a villanelle. Harry and Pearl, a villanelle. My father wears shoes in the afterworld, the shiny brown dress shoes we buried him in. My mother goes barefoot and answers to Pearl. Though that wasn't her name, Daddy called her girl and told us, your mother works hard, be good kids. Now Daddy wears shoes in the afterworld because he lay shoeless his last years, lay curled like a child in his bed, crying out, or he'd sing. And our mother went barefoot and answered him, Pearl, was her middle name, given her slurred at birth, a drunken granduncle's grandiose gift. But our father wears shoes in the afterworld, and our mother, who followed him, ever his jewel, to wherever they've gone, in her last white dress, goes barefoot beside him now, answers to Pearl. Won't answer to mother, and won't be implored. She cooked and she cleaned and she sang, that's enough. Now my father wears shoes in the afterworld, shiny brown dress shoes, and gives her a twirl. In his arms, she's his girl, she's his girl again, laughs. My mother, who's barefoot, and answers to Pearl. When I call to her, call to my sweet disappeared, Mother and father who slipped through my breath. My father wears shoes in the afterworld. My mother goes barefoot and answers to Pearl. 
for my friend Shafak, um, and also for the lives we had, it seems like a hundred years ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Poem for Dacha. We didn't know the world we loved was ending. We didn't know how much we loved that world. How I could fly from LA to Paris, fly from Paris to Istanbul, from Istanbul take a bus to the Black Sea coast of Bulgaria and back, fly south to Dalaman, take a bus to Marmaris, a dosha along the crest of a high wild peninsula. 50 miles in Meltem wind, cliffs falling away on either side, the blue-green Aegean below, and below the blue-green Mediterranean, all the way to the sleepy town of Dacha, where we met in the dark street and kissed. Everything seemed still possible then. We lived those days half asleep in the breezes from both seas and called this paradise. The lame goat tied to a tree on the hillside where we made love in the back of your jeep. The dog that followed us all through the town into sunny cafes where we met friends for tea. The morning you whistled a tune by Bregovich across the table from me as I wrote, remember, remember this. We swam in both seas and both seas were golden. And on moonlit nights, we climbed to the roof of your house to be nearer the stars. You have a home here now, you said, and we planned where we'd meet again, in Berlin or in Paris or Istanbul or high in the Caucasus Mountains, deep in the green of the singing world. We weren't thinking of bombs or coups. We weren't thinking of death being everywhere. Although, even then, the bombs were falling. Refugees crowded the buses and stations. An Ataturk airport was full of assassins, strangers in transit, bearing strange passports, slipping into the country and out again. Even then, attacks were being planned. Governments were falling left and right to the right, and those taking power, stockpiling weapons, hardening borders were taking that world away from us. Still, there was music in the streets those nights, the sky filled with gulls and a call to prayer. I still believed I could just keep going. You still believed you could go for days without washing the sea out of your hair. Carpathia. Carpathia is that region of the Carpathian Mountains, particularly southeastern Poland, where I have been going for 20 years now, more, 25. Carpathia. Having rinsed off the soot and stink of the Polish train, having sung with the child, having eaten and laughed and wept, had my vodka with apple juice, my bread, having walked through the fields at dusk and into the forest and back again. Meadows of buttercups, thistles with bristling heads, the first blue cornflowers of June. Having opened my arms to the sky falling back on itself in my dizziness. Having taken the small purple berries that dropped from the wild bush into my palm. Siberian berries, like tiny plums, put their sweet, bitter inkiness onto my tongue. Having failed and failed at love, having gone anyway, breath after breath, having trusted the world to be kind and stood in the doorway and listened for wolves and heard my own dead in the high grass whispering, beloved. Beloved, beloved.